In this video, I'll be drawing original Pikmin art every day for an entire month straight. I'll be following an art prompt challenge created by at Pickles Does Art on Instagram titled Picktober, where every day of the month is a different prompt I have to draw. Will I survive? Will I make it through this crazy challenge alive? Probably not, but there's only one way to find out, so keep on watching. Okay, enough with the drama. If you'd like to see me create some cozy and cute Pikmin art for the next half hour, here's the place to be. Grab a snack, get comfy, and let's enjoy some Pikmin creations together. Side note, I know I'm a couple weeks late to this October art challenge, but hey, I tried my best here, okay? Let's get on to the video. Alrighty, so starting off our 31 day extravaganza, we have the prompt, Hey Rookie. I kept it simple with this entry, depicting a literal interpretation of the base player design in Pikmin 4. I'm not sure if there's a specific name for this character, since you're able to name them whatever wacky name you please. In my playthrough, I named my captain Borb, so that's going to be their name here as well. All in all, this piece is cute and simple, establishing the theme of the first page of drawings. I wanted to focus less on backgrounds in these mini drawings and more so on the subject, so I left the area behind the captain a pale blue brushstroke blob, implying a gloomy sky. What did you guys name your captain? Let me know down below, but here's the finished piece. Okay, so moving on to day two, we have the prompt Space Dog. And of course, I had to draw my boy Ochi. I mean, it's kind of a no brainer. However, I guess I could have drawn Moss or the ancient Sirehound instead, but Ochi is just too precious and had to be included. During Ochi's initial reveal, I and a large portion of the Pikmin community were a bit skeptical. I mean, it seemed like such a radical change to the gameplay, I wasn't sure how much his inclusion would align to my pre-existing idea of a Pikmin game. However, I'm super happy to say that my worries were for nothing, because I think Ochi makes the game awesome. He's essentially another captain, but with added abilities. Obviously, his rush mechanic is super helpful, although a little overpowered in my opinion. I found him to be extremely helpful in the later Dandori battles and challenges, especially once he learns his swallow technique. There were some levels that would have been just impossible without him. We love Ochi. Day number three's prompt is titled New Friends. This could have been interpreted a number of ways, but to me, what made the most sense and made me the most happy were the two new Pikmin friends introduced in Pikmin 4, the Ice and Glow Pikmin. Ice Pikmin were such a cool, you see what I did there? Pikmin variant. Uh, I especially love their ability to freeze bodies of water. That made for some really clever puzzle designs. I know people feared that Blue Pikmin's ability to perform in water would be seriously undermined by the Ice Pikmin's freezing ability. I'm also happy to say that that's not really the case at all. I think the devs did a great job at balancing Blue and Ice Pikmin. Especially in caves like the Seafloor Resort, where your squad will mostly consist of only those two types. I will say, however, my one gripe with the Ice Pikmin would be their ability to freeze enemies is a little too OP in the game. I think the mechanic is a good idea overall, however, in my opinion, the game would be much more fun and challenging if it took a lot longer to freeze enemies than it currently does. Glow Pikmin are very interesting as well. They serve as a replacement for our beloved Bulbmin, RIP. Being resistant to most hazards, and aside from caves, are only present during the nighttime expeditions. I think the Glow Pikmin worked well for the game mode that they were utilized in. Their design is super cute and green's my favorite color. However, I think nighttime mode as a whole could have been better executed, which I can go over at a later time. All in all, I love my new Pikmin babies. Okay, so for day number four, we have the prompt, Treats. My immediate thought went to Ochi. 
you know, since he's a dog and all. However, I myself also love a sweet treat, and after some deliberation on what delicacy I should choose, I settled on a good old-fashioned strawberry cupcake. But it's not only strawberry flavored, it's also yellow Pikmin flavored, uh, whatever flavor that is. Uh, I just wanted to draw a little yellow guy chilling on top of the ice in. I think if I was a Pikmin, I'd definitely chill there. Also, side note, what do you guys think Pikmin tastes like? I've seen a lot of discourse surrounding this subject, with a lot of people thinking they taste like carrots. I guess I can see the red Pikmin tasting like a carrot, but I don't know, this yellow Pikmin looks like he'd be pretty tart. Okay, so Day 5's prompt was a little strange to me. It's titled Wraith Barber, which I guess implies the water wraith cutting someone's hair. I'm not entirely sure, however, I took the idea and kind of spun it around. I was thinking, what if the water wraith went to a barber or a salon to get their hair done? So, I gave them a nice little bob with some cute little curtain bangs. The energy this drawing gave me was very funny, very high school senior girl photo, so I added a kiss mark in the corner to amplify that vibe. Moving on to day 6, we have captains. I could have went the obvious route here as well drawing some of the new captains from Pikmin 4, or even Olimar and Louie, but instead, I decided to draw Pikmin wearing the captain's helmets. I thought this would be a cute visual, which it is. However, the more I started to think about this scenario, the less cute it became. If the captains didn't have their helmets, well, we all know what happens to these little space explorers when they're exposed to toxic oxygen. And to make matters worse, the Pikmin had to remove the helmets themselves and put them on. I don't want to think about how the captains lost their helmets, so I'm just gonna stop there. <laughs> Keep drawing though! <laughs> Alright friends, here's the last drawing of the first week. We made it! The prompt for day 7 is none other than the adorable Yildemand Wee. I understand why this creature got its own day, because truthfully, it's so damn adorable. The little gold on the back of its body, perfection. The light on the top of its head that makes it look like a captain, perfection. And its pudgy little face and body, perfection. I love him, but I don't love that he eats my Pikmin, so instead I drew him munching on a nice crunchy Pik Pik carrot. Gildim and we for the win. Okay, so for day 8, it's gonna get a little weird. With the prompt like sweaters, a normal person would think, oh, I should draw a cute Pikmin in a fuzzy sweater, or maybe even Ochi wearing an ugly Christmas sweater. And to that I'd say, you know, those are actually some pretty good ideas. I should have drawn that myself. However, instead, I drew this monstrosity. I'm sorry, but also, you're welcome. <laughs> So, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Pikmin sweaters exist. That's a thing you can buy with your money in the real world. Well, I unfortunately don't have one. So what's the next best thing I can do? Draw one and put our lovely pink puffball friend Kirby in the center. Well, I ended up drawing him yellow, but that's besides the point. In my head, this was gonna be cute, but in reality, it's giving mouthful mode from Kirby in the Forgotten Land. If you've played that game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I still want that sweater though.
For day 9, we have the prompt, Movie. Initially, I was having some trouble landing on a solid concept for this piece, but in the end, I settled on a simple scene of a cute dwarf bulborb enjoying some TV time. If you look closely, you'll see a funny, chubby little space cat man. If you recognize him, I love you. Day 10's prompt reads, Reflection. I figured it would be a perfect time to give the winged Pikmin some love. I already expressed in previous videos how I felt the winged Pikmin were severely underused in Pikmin 4, which is a shame. I actually have a video planned to go more in depth into that topic coming sometime in the near future, so keep your eyes peeled for that one, and don't forget to subscribe to see when it releases. But anyways, in this drawing, I drew a winged Pikmin flying over a small pond, trying to get a closer look at a baby bee. If I was a winged Pikmin, I'd for sure keep a bee as a pet. On to day 11, we have the prompt, Luminol. As you may or may not know, Luminol are an onion of sorts used by Glow Pikmin. I didn't just want to draw a basic, regular old Luminol, so I decided to turn the structure into a creature. Although, the design is not the most innovative or groundbreaking, I just elongated the bottom half and gave the creature two eye stalks to resemble that of a snail. I didn't necessarily come up with a concrete name for these guys, Maybe something like Luminales or Lumirolls. <laughs> I'm not sure. Let me know if you can think of a better name in the comments. In terms of gameplay, I think they could serve as a fun addition to nighttime expeditions, needing to escort the Luminale from one point to another while defending it from ravenous nocturnal creatures. For day 12, crossover, I decided to draw the Pikmin of Zelda, the Koroks. I love these guys to bits, they're so cute and charming. For this illustration, I chose to depict one of the backpacking Koroks present in Tears of the Kingdom. In that game, these Koroks provide a unique challenge requiring Link to carry them to their distant friend, since their bag is too heavy for them to lift on their own. Honestly, looking back at it now, I kinda missed an opportunity to have Pikmin carrying the immobile Korok, as it would have made more sense in the context of both games. However, I just added a little white Pikmin chilling on top of the Korok, eager to hitch a ride with him whenever Link comes to their aid. Day 13's prompt was Rubber Cutie. I drew this cute rubber duck cupcake candle, however, I lost all the footage of it unfortunately. But here she is in all her glory. Okay, moving on. For day 14, Slumber, I knew I wanted to draw a sleeping bulborb. It's really the first thing that pops into my head when I think of the words Pikmin and Slumber. However, since I already drew a relaxed red dwarf bulburb for day 9, I decided to switch it up. I still drew a bulburb, but this time a special one, the Frosty Bulburb. This is my first time ever drawing this variant and I enjoyed all its rigid ice edges. I love the design of this bulburb, with its cute little pink nose and rocky exterior. Plus, they're quite challenging in the game, if you don't have any Ice Pikmin, that is. And to me, the harder the enemy, the better. Moving on to day 15, the halfway point, we have the prompt 
nostalgia. Fun fact about me that maybe some of you might not know, I'm actually pretty well versed in pixel art and have created an art series in the past titled Beans the Frog Adventureland, creating over 60 illustrations. With that being said, when I read the word nostalgia, I knew I had to whip out some pixel art. I chose to recreate the box art from Pikmin 1, but in a pixel style. Let me know your thoughts on this piece, and if you'd like to see me explore more pixel art pieces going forward, as it's a style that I love to draw in as well. Sliding on over to day 16, we have the prompt, costumes. If you're anything like me, which honestly, if you're watching this video, then you probably are, the first thing that comes to your mind when you heard costumes is Pikmin Bloom's Decor Pikmin. For this drawing, I chose to draw the special Mario Hat Decor Pikmin as it's one of my favorite decor costumes. Do you all play Pikmin Bloom still? I used to play it a lot when it first came out, but it's been a minute. Should I get back into it? What are your thoughts? For day 17, Dandori, I chose to depict another blue Pikmin showcasing an exceptional display of Dandori by carrying a golden nugget. When I think back to Dandori challenges in the past, it was always these damn gold pieces that caused me so much pain and suffering. After carrying back every treasure and realizing you still have three pieces of gold across the map is a heartbreak like no other. So in memory of my trauma, I drew this scene for you all. The prompt for day 18 is fairy tale, which in my mind instantly relates to knights and princesses and hobbits and elves and magic. So I chose to draw a purple Pikmin standing epically in front of a master sword-esque sword while wind blows his white cape in the wind. I felt it would be extra fitting to draw a purple Pikmin for the fairy tale prompt since, if you haven't already seen my short animation, I drew a purple Pikmin living in a cute hobbit house, so the dots connected in my head. Day 19. Tricks. Ah, yes, I love a good surprise in my Pikmin games. And who does it better than our friend, the Creeping Chrysanthemum? Although I actually am a fan of the redesign in Pikmin 4, since I feel like they are a lot more deadly, the OG design in Pikmin 2 gives me so much more nostalgia. I remember the first time this thing jump scared me as a kid, I was petrified. Those are the moments that stick with you. So this piece is dedicated to Pikmin 2's Creeping Chrysanthemum. RIP, good friend. Moving on to day 20, we have the prompt, Glow. I went back and forth a lot on ideas for this prompt, but in the end settled on the obvious answer, drawing a glow pikmin. However, in my mind, this glow pikmin is obsessed with this little light bulb and carries it around everywhere he goes. Maybe he's afraid of the dark. Just because he's a glow pikmin doesn't mean he likes to be in the nighttime, okay? What if he wants to just vibe during the day? So that's exactly what I drew him doing.
For day 21, Statue, I wanted to pay homage to another one of my favorite enemies, the Burrowing Snagret. These guys also pop up randomly out of the ground to attack your squad. You may be sensing a pattern here. I love to scare myself. Keeping with the overall color scheme of day 18's prompt, I drew the Snagret statue in a cute pink fantasy field. Okay, day 22 is training, and I'ma be honest, I wasn't the most inspired by this prompt, but I pushed through regardless. I just drew a scrubby bone in a field of grass and called it a day. Sorry, there's not a lot to talk about with this one. Alright, well day 23, hate, on the other hand, is a lot more interesting. By the looks of my sketch, you'd probably think I hate this enemy, the volatile dweevil. I mean, these guys are responsible for single-handedly wiping out entire squads from both Pikmin 2 and 4, although a lot more aggressive in Pikmin 2, let's be real. However, I can't hate them. Truly, I actually think they are genius. Once again, it's my surprise bias, but I just think their inclusion in the game is super fun and keeps the player alert. Anytime one would drop in my head in Pikmin 2, I would literally gasp and run away as fast as I could. Honestly, peak gameplay in my eyes. I know the volatile Dweevil gets a lot of hate though, so that's why I drew them for this prompt. Day 24's prompt reads, freezing, and you know I had to draw my beloved Ice Pikmin. However, I also drew an enemy that shocked me when I first played through Pikmin 4. I'm not sure why, I just didn't think the game developers were going to make an ice variant of the Wally Hop, aka the Chili Hop, but they did. They really did. I love the color scheme of this enemy too, with its frosty blues and purples, they're designed really well, and I enjoy their inclusion in the game. Moving on to day 25, Mold. It was another obvious one to me. Of course, I was going to draw my little poison boy. Mr. White Pikmin, but keeping with the same composition as the previous piece, I wanted to include an enemy as well. And who better to include than the Toxstool? This was another enemy that truly surprised me, as its only main story appearance is in the literal final cave of the game. It's really just a poison variant of the Toadstool, and still missing the ability to create Puffmin, sadly. However, the Toxstool gets more points than Pikmin 4's Toadstool, since Mr. Toxstool has the added ability to revive mold and dead creatures. Creepy and delicious. My kinda enemy. Day 26's prompt reads, Fur, and if you've played Pikmin 2, I think I know the first thing that came to your mind, the hairy bulb orb, and honestly, I was very close to drawing that. However, another creature was actually recently revealed to be quite furry as well, the Mamuda. I've always thought these creatures had a stone-like body, but the Mamudas in Pikmin 4 are very soft and fuzzy looking, which fits more in line with their calm demeanor.
For day 27, the prompt is shattered, which made me think of a few things. Firstly, a frozen jelly float once it falls to the floor. Secondly, the mask of the original boss I drew, the Sundering Soulmonger. And lastly, it made me think of... an egg. <laughs> so that's what I did. An egg. With a yellow yolk Pikmin. Eggman. So, we've reached the final stretch of drawings now. Day 28 reads, Leafling, and since it's Halloween season, or at least it was when I was supposed to make this, but okay, that's besides the point, I decided to draw an orange leafling, resembling a jack-o'-lantern. The four dots for eyes was my favorite leafling variation, so I had to draw that one. I also replaced his stem with the cute candle wick and gave him some little devil horns. What do you guys think of this design? Are you getting spooky vibes, Halloween vibes, are you feeling it? <laughs> Let me know. Moving on to day 29, I got a little lazy. I'm sorry, it's day 29, what'd you expect? I'm just kidding, but actually, I'm not really kidding. <laughs> the prompt hide was a perfect match for my original aerial assassin enemy, the threaded murkrab. I used a drawing I already drew in the past, but I added a different scenery, so it counts for something, okay? I drew something in this section. <laughs> Okay, so nearing the final drawing, we have day 30, which is sickness. To be completely honest, I was a little stunned by this prompt. I wasn't sure how it even related to Pikmin, I guess by the leaflings, but there was already a leafling prompt. So instead of being literal with this prompt, I decided to take some creative liberties. In my mind, when I hear sickness, I also think of sickening. Which, if you are versed in queer lingo, sickening is synonymous with words like iconic, stunning, and fabulous. So, what would be iconic, stunning, and fabulous, you ask? Well, have you ever wanted to see a rock Pikmin in full drag makeup? Because that's exactly what I drew here. I gave them little hills, gloves, jewelry, and even a ponytail. This rock Pikmin is living their sickening fantasy, and I'm here for it. At last, we've reached the final prompt and the final day of this month-long drawing challenge. For the free space, I decided to switch up my style and explore a more painterly approach. I wanted to recreate, or at least emulate, the Mona Lisa, but portrayed as a red Pikmin. Sadly, my recording got corrupted while I was working on the first half of this piece, but luckily Procreate, the program I used to draw, has a time-lapse feature, so even though it's lower quality, I still have some footage uh, for the beginning of this drawing. But as we near the end of this video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I'm not sure how well this video will even perform, but it's something that was a fun way for me to make content while also adjusting to my new job and new routine. I recently had to get a new job, and I've been sick with the flu for a few weeks, so it's been pretty difficult to keep up with videos. But I hope you enjoyed this fun art challenge. And don't worry, more enemy design videos are coming. But I just needed to take a break from those behemoths while I adjust to my new life. Thanks for your support. Here's the final piece.
As a recap, let's go through all the drawings one more time. Okay, so that concludes today's video. Please don't forget to leave a comment, like, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. My website is paracosmparty.com if you want to check it out. Thanks to those of you who bought t-shirts from me, I really appreciate it. Shout out once again to at pickles-does-art on Instagram for making this prompt list. I hope you all are having an amazing day. And remember, never let anyone dim your light. Shine bright in any room you're in. Stay safe, stay lovely, I'll see you in the next video, beautiful humans, much love, Paracosm Party.